Welcome to Dancing with the Stars, the road to the finals. I'm Tom Bergeron. Tonight, as we count down to our live finale, we're going to dig deep, take a revealing look at our three finalists with some never-before-seen footage. They'll give insight into their favorite dances, pivotal moments in training that took them to the next level. We'll also get the expert analysis of our judges as they examine the journey of our stars. Let's start with the people and places that shaped the early days of our first finalists. Let's look at Amy's journey. Amy was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. She was daddy's little girl, you know, everything I would do, she would pretty much follow. I was really adventurous as a kid. I loved just being outdoors, outside playing. I actually was put into clog dancing by my mom, and I loved it. So kind of from a young age, I always had this desire to perform. When she became an athlete was when she discovered snowboarding, and that was age 15. And the passion that she had for snowboarding, it just warmed my heart, because I thought, yes, this is going to give her confidence. And, and it did. At 19 years old, I was on top of the world. I was saving money so that I could travel and snowboard. And for the first time ever, I felt like I was completely in control of my life. Then plans suddenly changed. One day, I thought I was coming down with the flu. But by the next day, I was in the hospital on life support. I had contracted bacterial meningitis. I was in cardiac arrest. And I remember thinking, this is what it feels like to die. When we walked into the hospital, she was completely gray, and she was just deathly. You just feel so helpless. You know, it's your child laying there, and yet there's nothing you can really do. It became apparent that she was going to have to have her feet amputated in order to live a normal life. I was being told that I may not walk again, but all I could think about was snowboarding again, and how was I going to do that? And I believed that there was a way and I was on a mission to find it. The first time that I tried snowboarding with prosthetic legs was really challenging. It kind of reminds me of what it was like coming into this competition and learning to dance. I have no idea what I'm capable of yet with dancing. We're defying the odds, baby. Yeah. Let's do it. Trying to figure out what my legs would allow me to do and, and recognizing pretty quickly that they're not moving the way that normal legs move. Nope. <sighs> like, I had legs for 20 years, so I know what it's supposed to feel like, but it's really hard for me. Amy, even with all the problems and adversity that she had, she never gave up, not once. And I thought that you were so elegant, and I know it was very difficult, but you created magic. And I want to say that I hope Disney will make their next princess like you. She has grown and blossomed into a woman on this show. I would never have imagined when she was sick in the hospital fighting for her life that she would be winning a medal in the Paralympics, dancing with the stars. Each and every week, we've experimented with all the different prosthetics, and there's been major breakthroughs. Amy's no longer just a snowboarder, and she's no longer just a dancer. I mean, she's a pioneer. It's in Amy's nature, absolutely, to live beyond her limits and not accept that she can't achieve a goal. She's gonna find a way to do it. This whole experience has been trying something that I didn't think was possible and figuring it out. That's something that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Now, let's check out a watershed moment for Amy and Derek. What do you think was one of the most pivotal moments like in training, where it was kind of like, oh wow. I think going into week three, doing our contemporary, mm -hmm. uh, because it was it was the first time that I realized that I could share a story through dance. So week three, most memorable year. My most memorable year is 1999. I was 19 years old. Look at you, all ready for prom. I know. I contracted something called bacterial meningitis, and I ended up losing both of my legs and my kidney function because of it. And that's also the year that my dad gave me one of his kidneys. I always say that my dad gave me life twice. He brought me into this world, and then through his gift, he kept me in this world. Can't believe it, Amy is dancing before she gets walking. Woohoo! <laughs> 
It's so crazy that we have this video and now I'm here dancing. I'm so grateful for that. And I thought I was coming on the show to learn to dance and didn't realize that I'd be able to, to think my family through it or tell a story through it and reconnect with that part of myself. Are these the first time you've ever worn these? Yeah. So the first two weeks we used just your normal flat. Right. You know, walking, walking feet. And we definitely had certain limitations aesthetically. And then we busted out these swimming feet. Right. That were the complete opposite, which was amazing because it, it created these lines that I couldn't get before. Or that I, I can't get in real life, you know, walking in prosthetic legs. My feet are kind of set in a certain position. Mm -hmm. And you miss that, you miss that feminine feeling of being able to point your toes yeah. and then we were able to do that with those feet. I remember seeing that in you actually, I remember you going, I actually have a video of it. So Amy, what do these new feet make you feel like doing? They make me feel like doing this. This dance is a tribute to, to the gift of life that he's given me. How do you say thank you for that? You said, how do I say thank you? I said, mm -hmm. you've been saying thank you from the day you walked out of the hospital on your new legs mm -hmm. by doing what you've been doing and, and, and not taking it for granted for one second. To be able to express it through this dance and through moving my body and 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 just sharing those emotions. And I mean, honestly, it's it's more amazing than I ever could have expected. You'll be able to see that remarkable dance and hear what they were thinking while they were dancing. We'll be back to hear more from our finalists and see some emotional moments like this. And I had so much anxiety. I'm just cracking. I cracked and it was something I'd never experienced before. You doing okay? No. I don't want to do this. I'm terrified. I'm not scared. Of what? I just feel like I need to stop doing that because I'm gonna give myself a heart attack. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> sorry. Welcome back to Dancing with the Stars, the road to the finals, our live finale. Coming right up with music from our special guests, Ariana Grande with Iggy Azalea, Christina Perry, and our reigning champion, Amber Riley. Plus, we'll crown your new champion. Right now, though, let's get back to our exclusive look at our finalists. It really genuinely was a massive journey mm -hmm. because each week was so unique in its own way. There was a breakthroughs every single week. Going into week three, doing our contemporary mm -hmm. was one of my favorite dances. Well, let's yeah. watch it. Dancing contemporary, Amy Purdy and her partner, Derek Huff. Are you stressing about that move every I time? Now you're like, oh, I'm stressed. You know, and balancing on those, I mean, really, that was the first time that had been done. I was just standing there. It was so difficult. Yeah, it was so much cooler. You know, I didn't tell my dad that this dance was dedicated to him or about our journey together. Amy, I wanted him to experience Amy's it. Fresh. Fresh. 
some of the hard the hardest things are the simplest looking things. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, because it just takes standing so much there. control. It takes less control to move. move around. Yeah. And I think we did it better then than we even did in rehearsals. Like I'd kind of step around a little bit because I wouldn't hold myself as strong. But yeah. but I listened to you and I used all of that emotion as power and strength and and I that fueled me. I'm glad. Thank you. That helped. Now here's what the judges have to say about Amy and Derek. Amy's like a force of nature. When Amy comes out, there's such fluidity through her body. She's got great posture, wonderful rhythm. She's just great. Amy has achieved the impossible. Amy is the full package because really she delivers everything you're looking for. Performance level, technique, musicality, connection with a partner, and there's always an element of surprise. She has been brilliant. When you watch Amy dance, you feel like you're watching a miracle happen. She is able to touch your heart and inspire you, unlike any competitor we've ever had in all 18 seasons. Besides being inspiring, Amy is also a fierce competitor. And without the bottom half of her legs. And it's, it's mind-boggling. Later on tonight, our champion will be crowned. If it's Amy Purdy, she deserves it because what she has achieved is borderline miraculous. We asked you to tweet your questions for Amy and Derek, and here they are. For Amy, how many different prosthetic feet did you use or try on during your journey on the show so far? Um, how many different types? So you got the flats. Yeah, so just my basic walking feet. Get those the, go into high heels, but The 45 degree. 45 degree, which I don't wear shoes with because mm -hmm. it helps me move my hips better. That's right. And then you have... The, Tippy toes. The sw swimming feet. Swimming feet. Blades. Running blades. And so I think that's about it. Yeah, so what's that? Four? Four. Yeah, four, four feet. At Zuri West one two three asks to Amy, what do you like the most about dancing with Derek? Well, I love I love the way it feels to dance with you. I mean, just in general, it okay. feels good. Okay. Um, you're a good leader, and uh, I mean, you're really you're I pretty cute. I so. I oh, oh. I had to throw that in there. Get saucy in there. <laughs> One of the things I love about dancing with Amy is that she never complains about her feet hurting. It's it's awesome. You know, no <laughs> blisters, no. <Right. laughs> yeah, no broken toes. No broken toes. It's, it's um, it's act. But uh, gen I don't know. That sounds like funny. And it sounds like a joke, but it actually is a genuine thing because it's it definitely slows people down. You know, their feet hurting and everything like that. So it's actually quite, it's been quite nice to, to, to worry about other things. There's definitely right. other challenges. No worry about that. <laughs> One of the questions was, what's something crazy that I do? That you do? Yeah. You rub holes in your shirts. <laughs> what? When you're like thinking, when you're trying to think about an idea, you're like grabbing shirts and rubbing holes into them. This is a true story. Like this. Or 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 you'll be talking to me and you'll grab my shirt and start to rub Just a like, hole. Uh huh. Yes, yeah. continue. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's strange. I don't know how people should know that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our live finale begins at the top of the hour. This special road to the finals will continue after this. the road to the finals our live finale coming right up with music from our special guests ariana grande with iggy azalea christina perry and our reigning champion amber riley plus will crown your new champion right now though let's get back to our exclusive look at our finalists let's check out how candace became a dancer i was born in sunny southern california i'm the real deal valley girl Growing up, she was just that cute little blonde, blue-eyed little girl, always smiling, always very happy. It was never a dream of mine to be an actress because I started at five years old. I went on auditions and I started booking commercials right away, and I thought it was really fun. She was dynamite right from the beginning. I mean, if you see pictures of her when she was little, you couldn't help but want to put her on TV. <laughs> 
I booked the role of DJ Tanner on Full House when I was 10 years old. My brother was already on a television show and it just kind of felt normal. I think that show was more than just your childhood. You know, you give eight years of yourself to anything, it's part of your life. There are things that are really fun about growing up on television, but then you also go through puberty, and that's not always fun for everyone to be watching you go through your awkward years. I was never the skinniest kid on television, and being a little overweight or being the chubby kid, it can definitely affect your confidence, and it affected mine. I remember her sitting in her dressing room and crying because she didn't like the way that she looked. Teen years are really hard, and I think teen years on television, when you're really under the spotlight, can be even more difficult. The transition from full house finishing into a new chapter in my life was almost seamless because I had met Val at the very end of full house. And we were engaged and I got married, so I went right into the role of being a wife and very soon after a mom. Candace is just a fantastic, awesome wife and uh, especially just a superb mom to our kids. She's the best mom in the world and she will sacrifice anything. Like it's just really nice to know that she loves us and she'll do anything for us. <laughs> Usually my mom is there supporting me and encouraging me when I'm down and now it's kind of flipped and I'm the one supporting her and encouraging her through this journey and I'm just super proud of her. Mom, I just showed my daughter and now I'm teary. <laughs> Dancing with the Stars has changed my life. I've never seen my body look like this. I'm like, all you people who think I was chubby, take that. <laughs> Candace has no dance experience. Every week I watch it, she just gets better and better. Candace, you can dance. I've needed my faith throughout this whole journey. I just couldn't do it without knowing I can pray to God and ask for help. And it's not help to win the show, it's help to deal with myself. I, I can do all things with God's strength. So I know that when I walk out of Dancing with the Stars, I will have a confidence with everything in my life like I've never had before. Because if I can do this show, um, I can do a whole lot of other things. From that turning point to this memorable routine, here's their breakdown of one of their dances. So one of my most memorable dances, but not because it's my favorite, it's because I never want to watch it again. <laughs> the cha-cha. <laughs> oh, I know. That, that was that the was... toughest week for me. That's when I was cracking no, majorly under the pressure. And man, I watched this dance back and it just shows. Yeah, it's oh. a rough week. Dancing the cha-cha-cha. Candace Cameron Bure and her partner Mark Ballas. Look at you, you look so nervous. Okay, I was like psyching myself up, like trying to get some face. Come into here, into this stride, and watch my leg right here. Wait, right here, my leg. That, oh, yeah, that. Oh, 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 horrible, I went out so wide. This is my favorite part, watch your face, ready, wait, wait. Oh. I just like chicken oh. armed it too. It's amazing. <laughs> I had a little blunder there. Yep, had you got it. me back on track, and I knew you would right there. Yeah, I had you. Oh, this is just, I, like, I can feel go. the anxiety <laughs> on, Never done this, you no. know. And you're 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 trying, dude. I keep seeing my arms, and I, like I totally understand when when Carrie Ann and Bruno, and they're nice. all like, that was it, that was actually my best turn. I love you how know. I just throw you around. I know you do. You just pick me up, and you're like. Hey, hey. I think that performance particularly is extremely memorable due to the fact that you kind of turned yourself around after that one. I don't think mm -hmm. you wanted to feel like that anymore. Never. You know? Because if I felt <laughs> like that again, I wouldn't have continued the show.
This special edition featuring the pivotal moments of our finalists will continue with more after this. I want to be the best for you. It's never going to happen. So sorry. Sorry, sorry. I just can't do it. I don't want to do it. Special Dancing with the Stars, Road to the Finals. Our live finale will begin in just minutes before our finalists perform their last ever dances for the trophy. They are revealing the secrets behind their favorite dances with exclusive never-before-seen footage. Now, let's check out a watershed moment for Candace and Mark. For me, one of the most pivotal moments in our training was going to see Dr. Jen. I was stressing about my nerves so much. And I had so much anxiety. I cracked, and it was something I'd never experienced before. Are you doing okay? No. Yes. Why did I mess up? That's okay. Everyone messes up all the time, Candace. Just... But I haven't gotten through it once in front of the camera. People don't realize that I've never done live shows right. before. It's always been on tape or on film, and I can stop and start if I mess up. Yeah. When we went and saw Dr. Jen, I think just being able to talk through some of those emotions, that was major. Why don't you tell me a little bit about where you're, you're struggling? It's crazy because she rehearses great. So she's very capable of doing this. Are you always blanking out in the same place? It's new places each time, and I stumble places I've never, never stumbled. stumbled. I think she puts the pressure on herself. Even though you've been acting your whole life, the kids who tend to do really well as actors growing up tend to be more type A kids who are perfectionistic. You know, when Dr. Jen said that the expectations I put on myself, that, um, the high expectations that, that were unrealistic. Like that, that was major to just say that out loud and kind of get it out there. I want to be the best for you. Like I want, I want, I know this journey is supposed to be for me in that way, but, but, but you're my partner. So I want the two of us to get to the end. I never want to be the reason of disappointment because I'm, I'm an encourager by nature and I'm a happy person. And so when I feel like I'm holding or someone back or pulling someone down. I feel terrible. This is meant to be fun. You're yeah. not having fun yeah. doing that. Yeah. You don't have to go out there and be like the most perfect technical dancer. You just need to go out there and have a blast. People love to see people have fun. It's yeah. infectious. You should never come on to a show like this trying to be perfect because it's never going to happen. I've been doing this my whole life and I don't dance perfect. I think the biggest takeaway for me with Dr. Jen was recognizing that I have some perfectionist qualities within myself and that it's okay to lower some of my expectations when it comes to my own performance. I don't have to be perfect. From that turning point in training to this memorable routine, here's their breakdown of another one of their favorite dances. What would you say was your favorite dance or most memorable dance for the reason because you really enjoyed it? Definitely the Argentine tango. Yeah, it's hot. I loved it. I loved that dance. It was good. 1970. 1970. 1970. 1970. I like that it was mm. slow and sharp movements, but it wasn't rumba slow. No, it's, it's understated and, and but sharp. Yeah. And that was nice. Remember, we had a couple of air, air uh -huh. issues with that in rehearsal. Yeah. My favorite part right here. Yeah, this is... Love that. Oh, I love that choreography. It was amazing. Yeah. Oh. I love watching the stands. Lift is great. I loved your arms, so you added those. Very nice. I did. Thank you. I just yelled elbow at you. I like, elbow! <laughs> I like this to my split with like I that was that face I was like what did I just do? Um she was getting after it there. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, oh I know! Oh, I missed it! She's too excited. I missed the step. But I didn't panic. Nope. Yay. I 
really like watching that dance. Yeah, oh, I felt so nice. pretty that day too. I just I love the makeup and hair and costume and just the feel of that whole dance. Now here's what the judges have to say about Candace and Mark. What I love about Candace, there's a charm about her. There's a fragility. At the beginning of the season, Candice had a little bit of what we call it a case of jitters. She was very, very nervous and unsure of herself. And it showed in the performances. She tightened up her shoulders. Her whole body was very rigid. And somehow, halfway through, she started to relax. She started to enjoy herself. Candice has it in her to win the whole thing. The trouble is, I don't think she realizes that. So she's just got to convince herself that she's in the final because she deserves to be there. I think for Candice, just embracing the situation was a turning point. What is so nice about Candice is that we've seen somebody kind of coming out of her shell. She has improved enormously as a performer. Candice is the underdog, and it's really quite amazing that she's made it this far. She struggled the most. So if she wins, I think all of America will be so happy because they'll feel like they won. Now let's go back to more of the questions you tweeted. So we have the best fans. We do. We have awesome fans, because that's why we're in the finals. That's right. I have a question here for you, actually. OK. This one's to Candace. It's from at Suhira Amin. How has the Dancing with Stars experience helped you grow as a performer and as a person in general? Oh. Well, it's definitely made me have to come out of my comfort zone. I'm trying brand new things I've never done before. Uh, personally, I've grown so much on this show. Obviously, the mental challenges, the emotional challenges. Um, I feel like a different person having gone through this experience. This is my 14th season, and this one's been a very unique one in the sense that, as a coach, you're very unpredictable. So it's like, you know, it definitely keeps me on my toes, and I have to really be 100% focused on you at all times. I'm awesome so glad too. I could help you become a better coach, because I'm so unpredictable. <laughs> okay, Mark, we have a Twitter question from Nicole Verona. What happens if you need to take a potty break right before you perform on the show? Gotta hold it. Just gotta hold that sucker in. I <laughs> always get nervous and then I always have to pee. And so I Solid plan idea. it out and go as many times as possible. Of course so you I have plan the, it out. The, the least amount of Of course, of course you have a scheduled <laughs> potty. Schedule. I'm a mom. Potties are always scheduled. <laughs> This is from Kelsey Landers, Candace, and Mark. You guys are amazing. Thank you, uh, Thank Kelsey. you very much, Kelsey. Do you do anything specific before each performance to help calm your nerves <laughs> and stay focused? Yes. Yes, we, we do. do. Breathing exercises. Breathing exercises. And sometimes Mark is like, okay, breathe. And sometimes I'm like, you need to help me breathe. <laughs> <laughs> do push-ups. We do push-ups because it's easier to go into the dance when your body is warm and sweating a little bit. It's yeah. much harder when you're cold. You Me too. Do some push-ups and then just and plank. And my heart's racing. Yeah. Yeah. And I outplank him, so you know. <laughs> More revelations from our finalists and behind-the-scenes footage coming up after this. So, what do you think our most pivotal training moment has been? Well, you know, the one that assured that I will no longer be looked at as a man. <laughs>
falling in love with, with skating right off the bat. Meryl was diagnosed with dyslexia at a very young age, and you could tell it was harder for her than most. Being dyslexic was really tough for me. For a very long time, I felt incredibly unintelligent. Things would take me a lot longer. My husband and I would be laying there and think that we would hear something, and we would realize it was Meryl up doing more homework at like 2 in the morning. So she was very, very driven. She wasn't going to let dyslexia interfere with what she needed to do to achieve her goals. The thing about Meryl is she's so shy, she's so quiet, but underneath all of that is such dedication, such a hard worker, a perfectionist. When Meryl and Charlie won the gold in Sochi, um, it was just a, an unreal feeling. It was almost like an out-of-body experience for me. There's a certain level of insanity that it takes to um, to win an Olympic gold medal. The ability to see something in front of you and just devote everything to it. A lot of Olympic athletes have a tremendous amount of hope. Um, they're very positive people and the work ethic is something that Meryl can transfer into absolutely anything. When I first found out Meryl was partnered with Max, I knew we were gonna see a completely different side of her than we saw with Charlie. Because her relationship with Charlie, growing up together, they're like brother and sister. But seeing a sexy Russian, this big guy, Meryl is just flourishing with the freedom that she has to explore herself. We've never really seen her um, open up um, with such passionate emotion. It was inspired, it was unconventional, and I loved it. I can't recall ever seeing Meryl really flirt with other guys. And as she's working more with Max, I think she's really like coming out of her shell and showing that sexy, feminine side. It's been a fascinating and amazing thing to observe as Meryl has grown up because she went from being a very shy little girl to being so outgoing now and comfortable on the largest stage. Spending time with, with Max and his perspective rubbing off on me, I've become more confident in who I am, and I've learned it's okay to share that. We could stand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And this is more powerful than anything you'll do. Yeah. Now let's get their perspective on one of their favorite routines. So I think one of my favorite dances is our tango from week six. Do you want to watch it? Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Dancing the tango. Meryl Davis sent her partner That's Maxine brilliant. Tmankowski. That's the best shot I've ever seen on the show. That was actually my favorite costume, too. I love that costume. I'm so close to you right now. It's a force field. And there's no stopping us right now. I feel so close to you right now. And then get out of here. Look at this. Look at that. That's like a visual orgasm. <laughs> it lights and flickering and stuff. I feel so close to you right now. I feel so close to you right now. It's a false feel. There, I pulled my groin. That was not very glamorous. I feel so close to you right now. Dude, your frame is brilliant. <laughs> We figured out the ending on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. We had no idea, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, how do we just stop? Do we dip everybody, you know? Dramatic. There's always that, that, that formula to end the dance on Dancing with the Stars. I just, I just can't do it. That was full of attack, it was full of purpose. Remember, Max dances full on. It doesn't matter who his partner is, you're the first celebrity that has been able to match him and keep up with him. There you go.
I certainly appreciated Len's comment, but I wouldn't do you the disservice or disrespect you to the point where I would think that I was matching you. Well, of course I you think do. You have a lot of power coming out of you. Oh, that's so cool. And I think that's what Len meant, is that, that you just matched that so well. And we got our first perfect score of the season with the Tango. We'll be back to hear more from our finalists and see some emotional moments like this. Can you please date, get married, have babies, and then name one after me? Welcome back to Dancing with the Stars, the road to the finals. The countdown has begun our live finale, now just minutes away. Now, let's check out a watershed moment for Meryl and Max. So, what do you think our most pivotal training moment has been? Well, you know, the one that assured that I will no longer be looked at as a man. <laughs> like, to hold my hand, to hold my hand. I will never let go. <laughs> by our four nines after the comments. To be honest, I was a little disappointed. Nine! You were you disappointed? Yeah. With that in mind, I feel like clean slate, new new dance. Let's 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 move on. Six, seven, eight, and Ooh. and one. Okay. Seven, eight, one. Oh, I thought we were doing that. The first one. Okay. And uh, one. Babe, we can't keep repeating same I just feel like I need to stop doing that because I'm going to give myself a heart attack. Babe, this step is easy. Yeah. It has to do with this. Yeah. You making yourself believe that you don't know it. Yeah. I think oftentimes you take on so much responsibility. I think you feel like it's your job to fix everything. Like me. Three, four, and five. So Sorry, sorry. Sorry. What's wrong? We do all we can. Last week, you get nine. Why am I so out of breath and just exhausted looking? <laughs> because I'm frustrated. And just sweaty. Yeah. I'm trying to do more, and it just sucks me back in. I don't want to do this. Phoning in? Did, did somebody really call me out on phoning in? But See, that's, okay, hold my hand. That's the problem, is you're questioning yourself, and you're not the problem. The problem today is you're scared. That's what I'm telling you. Scared of what? I don't know. I wish I knew. I'm terrified, I'm not scared. Of what? When um, we had that conversation and you were stressing out a little bit and I asked you to hold my hand, I feel like, for me, that was a way to kind of allow ourselves to lean on the friendship that we had built. And I felt like that was the first time I felt like we weren't kind of on the same page and we weren't together. And so I felt like making you hold my hand and kind of... Um, Stepping away from where we were was kind of a way to reconnect and reach back to the dynamic that we had built over so many weeks. Don't don't even try to pep talk me. I'm pep talking you. We can pep talk each other. Do you all? How many, how many people have you asked to hold hands before? I've never asked anyone to hold my hand before. That was the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can hold my hand anytime. Oh, babe. Now, here's what the judges have to say about Marilyn Max. Meryl has had more time at the top of the leaderboard than any other finalist. She is the chased, not the chaser. Meryl is one of the strongest dancers we've ever had. At times, she is indistinguishable from a professional. Strength, range, ability to play, 
characters with such an intensity. I absolutely am fascinated by them. They have the best partnership I've ever seen. It's magic. Once in a while, you can put two people together that don't know each other, and you get them dancing, and something magical happens. That is what's happened with Meryl and Max. She brings out the best in Max, and Max has brought out a whole other side of this Olympic champion that none of us ever saw before, and it's wonderful. Later tonight, someone will take that Mirabel trophy home. If it's Meryl, she deserves it because she's been outstanding all the way through. Unforgettable. Last week you tweeted your questions to Meryl and Max. Here's their reply. So we have some fan questions on Twitter. We have fans. We have fans. Yeah. So, Olivia Hargay is dying to know. Max, what is your favorite thing about Meryl? And the one thing you're going to miss most about her... Yo, let me see this after question. The show. Let me see this question. You just made it up. No. Uh, my favorite thing about Meryl has to be the, the incredible work ethic and um, just all-around genuineness. I, I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> and uh, she just, just thinks that she could pet me all the time because I can and get away with it and and she gets away with it you know from Jenna from Auburn and she asks can you please date get married have babies and then name one after me no I don't know you like name Jenna I like Jen I like the name but I don't know if I would name my oh, firstborn I just, Jenna yeah I mean, it's a great name. It's a great name, Jenna. Great name. Awesome suggestion. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. But this Madison Montgomery, I love watching Marilyn Max. They're so sweet to each other. Not true, she's not sweet to me at all. You see that? That's what happened. Patty, to all of our finalists, what is the one thing you've learned about yourself in this journey? Um, well, one of the things I've learned about myself uh -huh is that I feel like sometimes I need to stand up for myself a little bit more. Hell yeah! That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> All righty! We have at last reached the end of the road to the finals. Our live finale starts right now.